100,000. Thank you everyone so much for joining me on this amazing journey to hit this milestone. I look forward to sharing more milestones with everybody as we unbox and showcase these amazing anime collectibles. For a few weeks now, I've been promising everybody when I hit 200,000 subscribers, I would be unboxing a life-size statue. It's gonna be none other than Sage Mode Naruto. Because of the size of this thing, I'm gonna need to bring in more muscle. My brother, Bam Bro. Bam Bro. Hey everyone, Bam Bro here. So excited to be here back on the channel and here to help celebrate this momentous occasion. 200,000 subscribers and you guys have been here along for that ride and making a dream come true. Seriously, thank you everyone for being along for this. It's been an incredible journey and without delay, let's jump into the main event, Sage Mode Naruto. I know I said we're jumping into the main event, but I have to tell you, the owner of One Piece Collector, a reseller website, contacted me and said, for 200,000 subscribers, I wanna to donate to someone on your channel, this Apocalypse Studios Naruto that you see up here. Now, the original one is not custom lit up with LEDs like mine is, uh, but it's still an amazing and incredible statue, probably around a $500 value at least. So thank you so much for hosting this giveaway. He has been so supportive of me and my channel since I've started, and I am just endlessly appreciative of what you've done for me and also now for people on the channel. To be eligible with every video that's uploaded during the month of June, I would just say leave a meaningful comment on the video letting me know that you watched it. Watch time is super important on the channel, so I appreciate when you do watch the full video. But uh, just a meaningful comment being you know, not give me the statue, right? Just let me know that you watched it, enjoyed it, what was your favorite part about it, and, uh, and I appreciate that. Also follow me on Instagram, and then we'll do a random selection towards the end of the month for the winner of that statue. Now, without any more delay, we're getting into this bad boy. Because of the size of the boxes, we're not doing any kind of box turns. So if we take a look, here is the giant, enormous base. This actually all came in one box. Naruto's left foot goes right here. We'll see the outline of that. And then also in the center is a steel rod. So there's another steel rod coming out of his foot that's gonna slide right into place, secures him there. We'll take a look and see all the texturing and paint application on the rock. You can tell they went for a realistic look and they did accomplish that so well. For the other foot, we have a section over here where it's gonna rest. Now there's a notch in there, but there's actually not a notch on Naruto's foot. So I'm not sure why that was there like that. But overall, this piece probably weighs a solid 60 pounds uh, altogether. You need that to support what's going on top. Here are the legs. I tell you, it's so odd doing a review like this. It feels like laying someone out on a doctor's table. But if we zoom in here to the leg, we'll see this is where the kunai pouch goes. The carving slot is right there. And we'll go ahead and look at the pouch right here. It is a little scraped up. That's because the cloak from the sage mode you know, is going to be draping down on the side. It actually kind of rubs against this piece. That's why this also is kind of indented there because it rubs up against the cape. I don't really care. You don't even see this piece once everything's installed together. I guess they just include it for accuracy. And this has got to be the largest notch I've ever seen on a statue. This bad boy is large and thick because it's supporting the waist or the torso, which is extremely heavy. Now we have some texturing going on in the clothes here. If you kind of zoom in and take a look, the skin is smooth as you'd imagine. And we have some texturing going on for the ninja sandals or the ninja shoes. I'm not even sure what to call those exactly, but really nice weathering looking texture. And then you got the, the toes there. As mentioned before, we have the other foot with the steel rod in it, so it secures itself onto the base. The steel rod likely is casted up through the leg as well for that extra added support, but very needed for the statue to make sure it doesn't wobble or shake anywhere. My gosh, this piece right here has to weigh a solid 90 to 100 pounds. I did put a blanket on the bottom of my table so it doesn't scrape things up. And so if we look over here, we'll see the pattering of the flame. This, you know, this cloak reminds you of the fourth Hokage's cloak. A little bit reversed in how they did it colorization wise, but some nice shading from the black up to the dark blues. Looking at the upper torso, we'll see he is in classic form with his arms crossed like when he first returned to the village. I believe he was standing on Gamakichi, and so he has that perfect attitude. Great texturization all throughout on here as well. On the very back, we'll see a notch coming down at the bottom of the leather strap that holds the scroll. This thing defies science itself. Coming up soon, we're gonna be taking a look at the scroll and how that giant scroll rests on this little notch and stays into place blows my mind. Honestly, it's one of the scariest parts of the statue is how it just rests there. So later on when I do display it, I'm gonna have it up next to the wall so it can't fall off or roll off. But we're going up to the very top here. We'll see the zipper was sculpted nicely. This is actually a removable where you can shake it and move it around the very top of the zipper. But great, they did such a perfect job at bringing this to life. They captured every single detail that you could imagine in the outfit. 
In previous videos, I did tease this statue with this scroll. It is insanely huge, truly a life-size scroll. Looking at the side here, we will see as if it looks like it is, you know, rolled up. So you have the different pages that are wrapping and overlapping each other. The paint job on this is a little sloppy in certain areas, but you can't tell because of how large it is. The leather that's holding the scroll together does look different from the leather strap that he has on the main outfit here. So we can see it's more smooth, no texturing, but it does have that paint shading going on with the light and darker browns that do make it look like real leather. Twisting this around, I did want to show you the notch that it rests against that back portion of the leather on the cloak. It's insane that just this one singular area is how this giant scroll attaches itself to the statue. I, I just, I don't understand. I wish I could understand more how the heck they did that. Here's another angle of the scroll as well. Looks so good. In comes the largest head sculpt that I've ever held and showcased on the channel. This bad boy is extremely heavy, solid. So on the bottom is the notch that connects to the neck area. It has a little bit of a magnet on there, so it stays into place. But you'll see the skin tones were done really well, the hair as well. Here's the back where the headband's gonna go. So they did sculpt that strand that's flowing in the air separately. Everything was sculpted very proportionately. We can see that ear there, and then we have the cubic markings that go on the side of the face. There's actually indented into the statue, so it's not just a line of paint. And looking at the eyes here, it's just perfection. They did an awesome job with bringing these to life. He's so serious looking uh, because of the moment when he's entering the scene. And then the headband, right, it looks metallic, looks like an actual metal headband. So all around, the studio did a fantastic job bringing this to life. And they not only you know, gave me this head right here, but they actually included included a separate head that is an exact duplicate of the other. I, you know, kind of wish they would have had a, maybe a different emotion, but I guess they did include two just in case one maybe broke on transit or a piece of hair did. But here's that headband piece that's going to be flowing in the wind there. There's a notch and the magnet that allows it to attach to the back of the head. If for some reason whatsoever, someone's interested in buying that second head of Naruto, you can, I guess you can contact me, reach out to me because they both arrived perfectly safe. I really have no need for them. And here is my favorite card in the Naruto CCG right here, Sage Mode Naruto. A little bit of a flex here showcasing. I do have four, actually uh, a fifth I'll show later, but these are the four I'm gonna be sending off to get graded. I want a really good grade on this card. So that's why I've amassed so many of them. I hope I can do that when I send them away very soon. And here is my collection. Here's the fifth one right here if everyone's interested in seeing all of my super rare collection all of the super rares in the ccg let me know in the comments below i would la gladly love to showcase that to everyone in a separate video now that we've taken a look at all the different pieces let's go ahead and assemble this bad boy Assembling and moving this statue has to be one of the scary experiences as a collector. Um, I don't like to say prices for most of my statues, but I will say this statue was almost around $4,000 with the total between the actual cost of the statue and then the shipping itself. I mean, this thing took up a whole palette in and of itself. So it's just so much to be lugging around and moving around. This piece right here specifically is one of the heaviest things to lift it up. It's also awkward. You have to lift it over and around. And then once you get it above there, you also have to line up the notches of the waist and the top of the leg section to make sure it does fit into place. And you have to do so carefully so you're not putting too much pressure on the legs and wobble it because you could maybe snap those legs off. Huge thanks again to my brother for visiting and helping me do this video. He's been one of my main supporters. It's really been with me through this journey as many other friends that have been along for this ride. So I'm super thankful to be able to share this kind of apex moment of a collector and getting a life-size statue to showcase on the channel and enjoy in my collection. Now with him fully assembled, I have some furniture sliders on the bottom of that rock so we can easily slide him around. Or not easily, but easierly slide him around. And so it's gonna go at the bottom of my stairs. There's an indent in the wall. So you can go right here and uh, safely sit. So as soon as you walk down the stairs, this is what you're gonna see. And as soon as you you know leave the room, this is the last thing that you're gonna see. As you can see, it's a true one-to-one -one scale with where it stands and how tall it is compared to me. I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11. So you can get the size comparison there. As a collector, it's been a dream to own a life-size statue and to have one of Naruto and none other than him in his favorite outfit for me is a dream come true. 
from the top of my heart, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's such an incredible thing to do to be able to share collectibles with people, relive these experiences with everybody and enjoy our journeys together. I hope again that you enjoyed yourself today. I look forward to the many amazing statues on the horizon that we're gonna be looking at. And so as always, everybody, I'll see you in the next video. Do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.